Yo, what's up, it's the Dark Horse of Doom, well, welcome, we're going to be jumping with Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel Dawn, the special regulation duels, I have actually been playing them using the loner decks, obviously achieved it, got a pretty bad pack, but there's nothing out of the ordinary, um, I decided to think, you know what, there are some hidden challenges, obviously, for this particular, well, game, where you have to win a PvP duel with Exodia the Forbidden One, Victory Conditions, I've managed to win five times, but the problem is, I have very bad luck, I'll only go into one replay here, but then we'll jump into obviously a ranked game. And hopefully I'll be able to attain it. I've got one quite a few in terms of obviously running the Exodia. It's very old school, you know, with it being 2004. We don't have Witch of the Black Forest. We don't have Sangan anymore. Um, but we had Heart of the Underdog, which is kind of the way through of achieving what you wanted to play off into. So what we would do is activate Heart of the Underdog, be able to pick up a normal monster, which will continuously pick us up another card. When I mean I had the worst luck in existence, I genuinely could not be more unlucky. Because in this case and scenario and situation, I was able to pick up a good, what, 18, maybe 20 cards and didn't pull Exodia. You know, obviously I pulled into a second heart of the underdog, which you would think a second heart of the underdog would make things a lot easier for us. I need to get used to looking at the camera here personally, but it is fine. Um... So, with having two lots of Heart of the Underdog, no matter whether you draw a normal monster first card or second card, you can still play off the effect, which is great. Um, so, with doing that, we got ourselves Seven Coloured Fish and Ninken Dog, which then allowed me to pick up another two cards, which then followed through again, which gave me Reload and Luster Dragon. So, Luster Dragon was able to play off the effect, giving us ourselves seven colored fish i'm pretty sure I, I might have been wrong there i'm pretty sure the second card has to be a monster yeah the second card has to be a monster it can't be a monster than a spell card else it ends it i believe i might be wrong i haven't really looked into it on too much i just knew that if you pulled monsters a lot of the time you only really run one heart of the underdog on the field and you're not really that fortunate enough to have loads but the more and more cards i kept picking up i was thinking bro i gotta pull exodia there's 11 cards in my deck i've got to hit exodia at some point like i'm here look at this hand i've got two pieces of exodia and then i've got the head which is like further down it got to a desperate point where i had to play okay so we had ended up activating reload reshuffling our entire hand and still no exodia triggering off harder the underdog again being able to pick up two more monsters, we finally got the Exodia. I have never had Exodia in the, very early in the game. It's always been the last, what, five cards of the deck. I don't know whether they did something to it or what. But literally, trying to get some solid kind of combo off. Like, literally, I changed my name to I need Exodia. Because the problem is, is when you come to play it, a lot of people quit. You see how at the underdog, and it's like, oh, I'm going to quit. And it's frustrating. Obviously, it must be frustrating on their perspective. Obviously, be me picking up all these normal monsters. And then being able to play off reload to shuffle it back in. But this is the deck profile. It's very simple as stick. You know, the only effect monster you get. So anything that can cut you off is a spell card or the Exodia itself. Um, I'm not going to lie. I play a lot of duels. I'm obviously working towards the chat, the title thing. You don't need it. But obviously, yeah. It's an interesting thing. Uh, the aim of the game here. Just try and win one for you all. Um, but yeah, obviously it's a cool take. <sighs> See, there's so many pros and cons in terms to obviously of this old school 2004 style thing. I think it would definitely draw new people in if this was a regular event. But... See, that... That won't do. I will have to reload my... Reload back into the um, deck... Preferably the Exodia of the Forbidden One is what you want, but Heart of the Underdog would have been perfect. But okay, draw a card, your opponent gains a thousand life points. What I'm thinking is if this is... Okay, this is just one of the loner decks, we're fine. The worst that's going to happen is going to go Polymerization, bring out Twin Death Thunder Dragon, we just kind of have to hold it off. But um, yeah, so when it comes to this kind of old school style thing, it's great because you don't have to sit through combos. And it's like, okay, you bring out Twin of Thunder Dragon, sweet. You probably play one set, a couple of face down cards, and then you turn. So the worst thing I have to worry about is like, okay, is that going to be Solemn? Is that going to be, you know, Magic Cylinder? Although it's limited to one, but still going to be effective. 
All right, drawing into seven colored fish. I am going to reload here because I really want to be pulling out of the underdog. And if I can get the head. But the thing is, I've noticed when I reload, I tend to pull the same cards back. So let this go and bam. That's even worse. So as you can see, it's very inconsistent. Like very inconsistent massively. Like just to brick into three high level monsters is not what, what you want. But yeah. But more than times, I... If I get in situations like this where I don't pull out the underdog, it's a, it's a dual room. So you can just hit the surrender. The person gets to win. You've already completed the challenge anyway. You don't have to worry about it. But when it does play off, it's kind of like, oh, okay, you know, this might work. Might. You have to worry about Heavy Storm. You have to worry about MST. There's so many different outs, especially if you're playing up against Horus. Oh, the Royal Decree Horus combo is ridiculous. Basically, if you haven't played it or obviously seen it in action, the Royal Decree prevents any trap cards and obviously the Horus coming out prevents any spell card effects and negates every single one. So basically, you locked out spells and traps. Okay, this is good. We've got how the underdog strap of the bat. As long as this person doesn't have Heavy Storm or MST, we may be in a good position here. You probably could add Pot of Greed, but I'm not crafting an Ultra Rare card. No way, you know. It would have been good like to go with like Pot of Greed, Heart of the Underdog and things like that. As well as Graceful Charity. Into a Vorse Raider. And then ends their turn. That's fine because we've got Impachi. Impachi. Or we can go Mystical Elf now. Preferably if they don't have MST we should be clean sailing. But I think that's one of the worst case scenarios is whether or not they do have that kind of play. Which in theory you could run cards i don't know if magic jammer was able to be used in this point but maybe i probably could run it but then obviously it contradicts the whole heart of the underdog thing locks you in it doesn't lock you in but basically if you pick up the trap card it cuts off how many cards you pick but but the thing with reload what's good is if you have to hit reload and redo it again you get to play off the monsters you picked up again okay this isn't the worst we just kind of gotta hope we could pick up about 10 monsters, get a reload. You know, not one Exodia piece in my hand at the moment. Attacking for the 1900. It's funny because obviously I put don't rage quit and then... Alright, okay, here we go. We surrender the last game. Here we go. We might be good. Into a leg. As long as we don't hit the head early or maybe... If we can get a cutoff point to be reload, this could work. Okay, there's the arm. Could this be the first time I actually get it very early in the game? Oh my god! Go up, mate. I swear, you give me the leg and the head next, yeah, I will die. No! If this is the head... Oh, I was going to say, that is insanity. Oh my god. The only thing that can really do me dirty now is the preferably we would want to destroy this, but also if I have to play this smart, Vorse Raider might attack. But I have to discard two cards, so we'll get rid of Impachi and get rid of Ninken Dog. If you ever noticed, Ninken Dog is our like member symbol in live streams. You know, when I live streamed. But yeah. Obviously, this is just solely to get me the Exodia challenges because I don't run Exodia. And in the current state of Master Duel, I don't think you'll ever be able to play off Exodia regardless. So potentially, this guy might attack with the Twin Head and attack for 38. But we have to bank on getting the head in the next set of draws. Because if we don't, we is in trouble. Now, I'll have to reload. It's literally the position I'm in. Preferably, we'd want to try and get the head. But if Force Raider... Okay, smart play. Well played. Okay. 19. 19. Can we hit for the Exodia? Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Draw. Really? Bro, this could not be more screwed up if it tried. This is awful. Well, that didn't go well at all. 
What? Discard the Curse of Dragon. Activate the second heart of the Underdog. Which should be able to reveal the Curse of Dragon. Obviously, we still have reload. So, if it comes to it and we do pull into like the Exodia head, then we could just reload again. And obviously, make a play off of that. So, adding the Neo. Adding the Impachi. Triggering off Heart of the Underdog again. Hopefully, this person doesn't surrender. Because if they do, it kind of ruins what I'm trying to achieve here. But this is the problem with this deck, yeah, is you run 90% normal monsters, so you should think it would play off pretty well. But, unfortunately, apparently, Exodia likes to chill at the bottom of the deck every single time, so we'll go Heart of the Underdog again. I kind of wish there was an automatic mechanic for this, so you could just turn it on, and it just automatically feeds through until you hit a spell. But unfortunately, I don't know, you might be able to. That is last resort. Reload is last resort here. Curse of Dragon, okay. We got one leg. Let's go. I don't know why I'm feeling bare like this. Not feeling really a bit weird, man. Heart of the underdog. Do 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 do. Into the luster dragon, leading up with an aqua Mador. The thing is, people get very impatient with this as well, because it continuously goes on because of all the normal monsters. They get annoyed. It goes to show how impatient they are. It's probably nearly as bad as sitting through combos. We just... T oh, okay. We just drew into the reload. We have no choice but to activate the reload. Nope. Into the heart of the underdog again. Reveal the Mechanical Chaser. This is ridiculous. I was one piece out. What have we got? Three pieces in hand? I think we've got three pieces in... Yeah, three pieces in hand. We've got Reload and we've got another Heart of the Underdog. Mate, we can literally trigger off the Heart of the Underdog, hit the Reload, and then pick up the three on every normal monster. But... This, this is the problem with it, is the fact that it's just a long-winded like style of play. That I respect the people that sit through it. It's just, why can't Exodia just hit? Like, why does it sit through 50, 100 monsters and not see an Exodia piece when I need one most? What's going on with me, man? I feel bears distorted. I don't know what's going on. My God. You know when you get bloody motion sickness? My God. Must be all these cards flicking into my eyes. Alright, let me activate them again. Right, we've got 11 cards, man. I guarantee it's bottom three. There was one time it was the last card in the deck. And it was just like... I didn't even hit it. I lost in the end. Ridiculous. My god. They really like putting the Exodia piece at the bottom of the deck. Right. Got nine cards left. This can't be that bad, surely. Summon Skull into Luster Dragon. Oh my god. This is the problem. This is why a lot of people tend to rage quits. Because this is the situation that occurs. Like you'd expect Exodia to hit. Look at all the cards we've got in our hand. There's seven left in our deck. Like we are literally only got normal monsters left in our deck build. So we've won regardless. It's just when those pieces decide to rise and shine. There we go ladies and gentlemen. And the Exodia has been acquired. It's a headache. It is. You literally sit through, adding the normal monsters, hit the reload. If you don't have the cards, hit the reload, shuffle them all back, and re-go again. But yeah, at least he stuck it out, so I appreciate that, man. Anyways, I don't know if we're going to likely be able to hit it off again, but we'll try again. I'm not going to lie, to put the fan on, man. I'm sat here like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> no idea why, but yeah. To be honest... People are probably going to hate this regardless. Why is it my camera seems weird? Is it because it's not in... I want to go first. Fly. Okay. I don't know why. It's just my camera just seems very... Off. I don't know why. I might be wrong. Or maybe it's because I haven't been playing on the computer as much and... My eyes can't adjust to the light anymore. My god, what's going on? Okay, not a bad start at all. 
25th anniversary. I don't even know where you... Did we get that emblem? I can't even remember. All right, here we go. Let's do this. The worst case scenario, I preferably wouldn't mind getting reload in hand. Okay. Oh, he might be running Exodia as well. Interesting. The Spellbook Organization. Nope. Okay. Hex. Okay. What Dark Fusion are you going with? Nothing. All right. Mechanical Chase. We'll probably have to attack and destroy it. Let's draw. Bam. Preferably, if you can get the Exodia head in your start in hand, it's definitely um, one of the most beneficial situations to be in. So, go heart the underdog. Mechanical Chaser. The worst case scenario is going to have Sakuretsu armor. Ring of Destruction. Okay. I'm a little concerned now. Did he go attack mode to bait me out? And then that way he can fusion into... If this is what the deck I think it is, it would be either Meter of Black Dragon or... Black Skull Dragon. Okay. I don't know why it's activated that, but... Each to their own. He does realize that by... I don't know why he activated it. King Dragon. Just... Why would you activate a spell knowing you're going to go into that? Once per turn you can special summon a dragon from hand. This is kind of poetic really, but we'll see. I got a dragon in my hand too, called Lurs the Dragon. Preferably stack up the monsters. Okay. Alright, Heart of the Underdog. And then... Set in defense mode, and then we'll turn. In theory, you probably could stall it out by adding cards like Gravity Bind, Level Limit Area B, uh, Swords of Being Light, things like that, but I kind of... Kind of like the Heart of the Underdog way. You know, speaking of swords. All right, what do you got, mate? Either way. Ooh, another hex. Impressive. But you can only attack with dragon. Obviously, I can attack his monsters because of swords and the spell card. But preferably, hopefully, we pull Exodia by then. Exodia, the forbidden one. Come to me. In Pachi, Heart of the Underdog activates. The other thing is, the good thing about this is we already have two Heart of the Underdog, so we've only got one left in the deck. Also, if we pull it first before the other card, being a normal monster, we can pick up two more cards. And the only thing left to draw into that's going to ruin us is Heart of the Underdog, or Exodia Head. Preferably, we want the spell cards to be the first pickup, same with the effect head, because then we are pretty much game. But no, my luck, it will be... A normal monster and then a spell card. Yoink. There you go. Oh, double normal monster. I will take it. Please don't rage quit. That would be greatly appreciated. Thing is, I just want to kind of get the title. I don't I don't know. There's just some about doing this that makes me want to get the title. You know? Mechanical chaser. It's funny because everyone who's done this kind of video on the chat on their YouTube channel has Pot of Greed on the front. And my original thumbnail was Pot of Greed as well. Because everyone's so nostalgic with that card, although no one actually knows what it does. But yeah, for some reason everyone seems to know it. But my thumbnail now is going to be Heart of the Underdog with Exodia the Forbidden One. There we go. Okay, that locks us in, which is fine. We're going to hit off the reload. Reload! Draw! And then I activate Heart of the Underdog. There we go. So we've got one, two, two Exodia pieces. And then we've got Reload in hand as well. So we can literally just reload again. Resolve. Pick up Luster Dragon. Pick up Neo Magic Swordsman. 
It's funny because if you don't run Heavy Storm or MST, you've got no way out of this. That's my only two weaknesses for this build. Oh, and a Surrender. So if this was an actual genuine tournament, I'd probably run it like this personally. Because a lot of people don't really like the idea. Come on, man. There's 16 cards left in the deck. Just give me the Exodia pieces. My God. Where's Seeker when you need it? My God. How have I pulled all these monsters and yet I still don't have... I have what? Two Exodia pieces. There's a 14 left in the deck. What was that? I don't know what they were. Okay. Well, either way, it doesn't make a difference. Still going to be picking up. It was an Exodia leg. And... Okay, so we've got three pieces of Exodia. Three. It's weird because it looks like four, but yeah. No, not four. But it's the way my finger was positioned on the camera. It's like, oh, there we go. One more for the road. Let's go Exodia. Obliterate. I hope that the wind counts before the animation, and which I don't think it does. So if someone decided to just quit right now, which would be awkward and annoying. But yeah, it's not bad, man. Not bad at all. Fortunately enough, I've actually been okay. What deck was he running? I'm assuming it was a stat structure deck. Solemn. No, it was built his own. Okay, that magician girl. See, it's amazing. I'm, I'm genuinely surprised more people don't run the Exodia method personally but it is what it is obviously we work towards the challenges as well and what is our lifetime i think we're, we're three more and then we get the title forbidden one which yeah i i kind of want really plus you work towards the uh, special victories which i don't think i feel like special victory should be a kind of situation of being like 500 gems or something you know but it is what it is. All right. One more for the road to see how consistent this can be. Preferably, if you get a good start with Heart of the Underdog or even a reload, you're pretty... No, no, no. Definitely Heart of the Underdog's 100 times better over reload. Reload just is good when you run out of resources or you pull into a reload or the Exodia head and you want to go again. But once you get it going, mate, you're, you're cooking. Ah. All right, here we go. Draw. Yeah. Okay. Reload. I'm going to have to reload early just to try and get hard the underdog. If you don't get hard the underdog, you may as well surrender and just, you know. The worst thing you've got is a loss on your record, but does it really matter? No. It's more than likely people are probably going to rage quit against the Exodia anyway, but we'll see. The only thing you've got, actually, tell a lie. I did say you only have to worry about the spell cast. You do have to watch out for, like, Morphin Jar and things like that, though. Or Cutter Destruction. They could be a problem. But here we go. I activate my reload. Loaded the pyramid to my gun. Here we go. Heart the cards. Ooh, that's naughty. I'm all for it. I'm going to go Heart the Underdog here, though. Other than that, mate, we are pretty much good. We can't use reload here because it doesn't cut. Okay. We are going to reload here. Which means we are pretty much in a kind of good position, I suppose. Obviously, we're down to three. I w I've only achieved it once where you pull all five Exodia pieces in the start in hand. Once. That was on Link Evolution. <laughs> and I'm so annoyed because when I was, had I was saying this to members the other day. When I had to wipe my Switch, I lost it. So... Technically, yeah, I only have my word of mouth, which is shit, really. I'm gutted because I've got other shit on there, and it's like, <laughs> the one thing that matters, where is it gone? But yeah. Obviously, if you're familiar with Link Evolution, you'd obviously understand that, obviously, with that type of game, you used to have to grind all points to be able to open packs, and running the Exodia build was the fastest way to achieve it. Until they decided to implement an animation into it. And then I think Chaos Max became the way of winning very quickly. And efficiently. Okay. 
The only thing is we're going to hold down defense and we seem to be in a troublesome position. You probably could persevere it out and then hope that Heart of the Underdog's the next card, but realistically, you're probably just going to brick now. Oh, my bloody jaw. Okay, so we're all good. The Maha Velo destroys my Impachi. Come on, man. All right, if I'm banking on anything right now, I'm quite surprised this duel list isn't running. Uh... See, this is the situation you end up in because now I've got two reloads. So I've got one reload and two Heart of the Underdogs left in the deck to be able to make any sort of play. Preferably, if this was Morphin Jar, that'd be great. Magician of Faith, giving you back the MST, which will basically rule me out for my other Heart of the Underdogs. So we'll just let him have the win. Well, say let. He would have earned the win regardless. But yeah, because this is one of those dual trial events, get as many challenges as you can in this. Um, I worked on the Gemini summons uh, for the other dual event. It's the smartest and fastest way of doing it because how often are you going to run Geminis in ranked play? But ladies and gentlemen, it's been a pleasure. Thank you guys for watching. I know I didn't really do much. It's weird adjusting back to recording videos, but stay safe. Appreciate you all. Take care. Peace.